Hey guys, Nick Drossos. Dr. Andrew Steinberg. And welcome to another episode of... I have the balls to talk about it. And today we have a special guest, professor, author, sex educator, Christina Theophilos, who came to educate us a little bit on actually what I'm living right now. And basically, how, how can we talk to our kids about sex when they come to us? Now, I think, Andrew, Andrew you've, you've done the talk? Well, my daughters are older, 17 and 21, so we're sort of on to the next stage, okay. I guess. Did you do the talk? But, uh, <laughs> well, they had, a, thank God, at school they had good uh, okay. health, had health uh, educators. So, so we're I'm not trained. I mean, the training in school is better from from having great you know, educators that, that, that visit them in school and great aides and booklets and so on. But we're as parents, especially fathers, yeah. are not trained to, uh, to do that. Mm -hmm. Christina, so t yeah. tell us. I have so much to say about this. Okay. It's my favorite I'm subject. Sure. Okay. Uh, sexuality really encompasses, you know, not only the physical, the body, the biology, as you know, but so much of the, the emotions and the spirituality that I think we forget about. And teens are not really uh, tapping into that because of the porn industry, for example. Uh, but you mentioned teachers, and I'm, I'm a teacher. I've been a sex educator for about 15 years. And um, it, it's very tough for teachers to, to be teaching this subject because a lot of teachers aren't comfortable with it. So I also do teachers training as well. Um, well, you know, I mean, I don't know what age group you are. I remember when I was 14 or 15 and the teacher comes in and shows you a penis model and a condom. Everybody's right. giggling and making yeah. jokes and, yeah. and whatever. Yeah. It, it can't be easy. It's, it's not, but it's so important, you know, and I think uh, in the laws today, every state or every province is, is different. Some of them ban sex education in schools oh, that's because of religious purposes, right? Or, or even some schools that it's mandatory to teach sex ed. It's part of the curriculum. It's not, they're not getting it. Right. You know, and, and it, it, what they are getting is in their biology classes, especially the anatomy. But they need so much more about self-esteem, body oh, image, everything. all the stuff we could talk about. I have today. a question. Mm -hmm. Is it, is it? At what point do you think, is it the parent's job? Is it right. the school's job? Right. And as a parent right now, I'm an 11 year old boy. Mm. He's been asking questions and you know, being from a Greek traditional home, nobody ever spoke. <laughs> it was like, what? Yeah. You yeah. know, so it's, I ha I, I've never had the talk. I don't know how to give the talk. Right. I don't know birds and bees. I'm like, eh, does it go? I don't know. So right. where do I start? I'm gonna tell you everything. But first, I'm gonna ask you, answer your question. Whose responsibility is it? Is it the parents or is it the school? It's both. Yeah. And some parents, like uh, Greek fathers, they, yeah. they, their fathers didn't talk no. to them about it, or their mothers, it, they're very traditional, right? So if I ask you guys about your fathers, did they tell you about, <laughs> teach you about anything about, you know, orgasms or masturbation or <laughs> In the word, uh, we're both giggling with little kids. Or, you know? <laughs> Stop no. it. So, no, no, my older brother did. <laughs> okay, okay. So anything... Andrew. And you guys turned out okay, right? And this no, is not really. Uh, <laughs> so some debate. Some debate. <laughs> so parents that are so worried, and, and you you have every right to be worried about uh, the knowledge that your students are, your, your your kids are getting. But just think that you guys turned out okay, and you got nothing. Now the kids, they're they're getting something, but it would be even better if you if they had you guys also just giving them some sort of guidance. You know, the, the ultimate goal is to help them respect themselves yeah. and others, Have respect their bodies in every single way, and their partner. Because nowadays with pornography, yeah. which we'll talk about, yeah. uh, there's no respect for the partner. Right. So we have to talk about that. What, what is a real re loving relationship? Okay. Well, this Barbie doll I usually bring is to show you know, body image. A lot of girls, you know, kids grew up looking, this is the ideal uh, body weight and length. You know, this, we knew a, need a lot of plastic surgery to, <laughs> to look like that as women. So it's important to discuss it even as, um, you know, they're, they're babies. That's why you asked me about your son. It really depends what age your child is at. If it's, you know, he's between six and eight years old. Uh, you could talk, start, slowly talk about body parts and reality. If there, she's playing Barbies, you know, that's going to be one discussion that we all have different shapes and sizes and colors. And, uh, and then when you get to puberty, you could talk about, you know, hormones and pimples and different smells and hairs that start to change. Mm -hmm. At what point, like, do I, st do I talk to my son now? He's 11. He's asking yeah. me questions. Do I tell him, oh, this is how it works? He's like, Dad, I know everything. I'm like, oh, does yeah. he? Uh, 
<laughs> he knows everything. That's the greatest excuse. He's reaching adolescence now. So a lot of teenagers, they're so uncomfortable talking about it. They want to run away. They know it all. It's okay, Dad, I know it all. I, and where do you think he's I learning it from? I'll tell you a funny story. My yeah. niece was, came to, we were having dinner for a family event, and she knew I was in the, it was a urologist, and she started asking me, you know, uh, where do babies come from? So I start to, like, break out into a sweat. <laughs> so, um, I, I, you know, I start to talk about, uh, you know, the man and the sperm and very scientific and whatever. And I'm, I'm, I'm completely sweating. And she's like, yeah, and then what? And she's really pushing me along. And then afterwards, she goes, you know, I knew all that. I just wanted to <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. Thanks, Jenna. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's a good awesome. One. But that's really great that what you did, yeah. because most parents want to uh, baby talk them. So I shouldn't baby no, talk. I shouldn't. Absolutely. Kids are, are more mature beyond their years nowadays. And so it's recommended by in the literature to talk to them as adults, explain it to them like they're adults. So how do I, like right now, if I had the conversation with my son, right. Like, no, come here, so, let me talk to you. So. 11 years old, so you would start talking about either wet dreams. Okay, oh, he's wet having them already? Yes, oh, uh, it could. You know, right when puberty starts, and that could be anywhere from, you know, 10 to 15 years old. But what is a wet old. dream about? So, wet dreams are, are it's an, an example of what you could be talking about with your son at around this age. Um, wet dreams, uh, masturbation. This is the time that their genitalia is probably growing. Do I actually like? I, do I like? Do I say no. This so is. So there's two. Yeah. Like, I mean, I just. I <laughs> mean, it's. it's uh, I mean, options. it's so funny because we're it's men. So it's like awkward. we're little kids. I yeah. Know, it's like how I do you know. It's so awkward. But just be honest. Or you could use the the thing like, um, I read an article today about boys and masturbation. Do you know what that is? So number one, oh, just say I read script, something. Yeah. I saw something on TV. Just to bring in the hook question, right? And number two, you could say. Hey, uh, you know, my, do you, any of your friends do this? Because my girlfriend was telling me about her friend at school that he's, he's starting this, this uh, uh, masturbation. And I just want to tell you that if you have any questions about it, come see me. Because it, it's okay and it's about your body. I know your body is changing right now. And so just be free to... tell them to, that masturbation makes you go blind or anything? No like, way. No? <laughs> no way. Because the more you suppress their yeah. curiosity, yeah. Yeah. what do you think will happen? They're going to... Masturbate like crazy? Yes. Okay, and that's where we come with addictions. <laughs> Any kind of addiction or forbidden fruit. Yeah. What do we want? We always want that forbidden fruit, so don't forbid it. You know, just embrace it and yeah. tell them, you know, it's private parts. This should be done in private. Uh, you know, and then you could talk about consent, you know, and that's why it's private. Only mommy and daddy could be touching you there. Okay. So if ever like a coach or a teacher or someone that's in, really in the religious well communities, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, you know, when you're doing the bath time, uh, and I hope more men should be doing bath yeah. time because they usually, after, you know, uh, one years old, they, they hand it to the mother. Yeah. But no, this is an important time that you could be bonding with your child and also talking about hygiene, as you know, with, you know, the foreskin in the bath time. That's a good time to We talk about teach the, the, age of, but it's, uh, the age of the children, but also the maturity, because I know my mm -hmm. two daughters were completely different in their awareness, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, and, and, you know, when I were younger, I would take showers with them. And, yeah. You know, there was one who would be completely... Um, you know, blind to anatomy parts, and the other one was like, you know, flicking my balls. I'm like, okay, <laughs> she's, she, you know, she's, <laughs> she's more comfortable. Yeah, or, or yeah, like, yeah, yeah. seeing something on TV, yeah. the other one, yeah. and, and she would not like a sexual, uh, we don't watch porn, but the, whatever, yeah. and a TV yeah. series kissing, it wouldn't make any notice of it, and the other one would be like sitting there like this, and you know. Yeah eyes wide open. I, I'm talking right. about around the same age. Absolutely. They were so different in terms of their Absolutely. awareness. Every individual is yeah. so different. Every student is so different with yeah. their, their DNA. And like, I think, obviously we're going to talk about it in another episode, but is it me or the kids are getting a lot more information a lot yes. sooner, a lot yes. faster? Yes. And that makes it harder for the parents. You know, if the kid's talking to you about this at six or seven, you're like, why yes. is he or she even asking about that? Cause right. And uh, just like you told me about 11 years old, they say about 87% of, of boys around 11 years old have already seen pornography. Imagine. Wow. I, ho because, oh, I hope he hasn't. Yeah. <laughs> Cause we're gonna, again, we're talk about it. Yeah, it affect, I'm sure it affects the brain somehow. Absolutely. But wow. see, it's accessible, it's anonymous, 80%. and it's free. You know, and 87. It, I think it's less than 20% of, of pornography websites ask for verification of their age. Wow. So, you're, you know, maybe your son didn't go look on himself, but maybe a friend that maybe sure. was a bit more uh, open or spontaneous might have shown him this Or maybe you left it open on your Or maybe browser. you left it open. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's But even the music videos that you see Absolutely. today, 
music videos, the movies. It's, Very it's sexualized. So we live in a yeah, hypersexual society. Yes. So yes. I think it puts more pressure on. I don't want to say pressure on the parents, but you. I, I'm thinking. Do you ha are you having the talks sooner or late or earlier than we used yes. to 20 years ago? Yes. But with the sure. pornography, do we want to prevent them from accessing it, or do we want to? explain to them that this is not normal or when they come to me at an early age in their oh, early young age. 20s with erectile dysfunction right uh, a lot of them have had a strong history of of uh, of watching pornography and masturbation Absolutely. excessive masturbation yeah. to the point where it's not they can't be i don't know what it is the the right mindset or or the right expectations when they're with a woman absolutely or, or a man it gives so much pressure for yeah. both genders for yeah. guys to perform that way to yeah. treat mm -hmm. women that way that instinctively you know they wouldn't want their mother or their sister to be treated so right. there's a, a large confusion mm -hmm. so you have to talk about it maybe yeah. uh, if not then a push for the well, school I, I see them when they're too late yeah <laughs> <laughs> or parents don't know how encourage schools to yeah. do it because then after schools that do do it they also get in trouble from parents that don't uh, want the talk to happen, that they believe in abstinence only. Right. And that doesn't work. Right. Studies show it does not work talking about abstinence only. It's impossible to neglect right. the facts and say, let's wait till marriage and not talk about anything. Mm. Let's be realistic. So, so you just, yeah. LGBT, I mean, it just brings up, opens up a whole new can of worms. Yes. You know, do you believe it's something that we should say to our, whatever age they are, yeah, hey, there's some, men who like women and there's some men who like men and there's mm -hmm. some uh you know it's 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 cool talk about it if you have any or, or is it something that we wait till we see signs of and mm -hmm. then uh, you know what yeah. what's so and and sorry and how is it related to a father mother like talking to their kids about this okay i'm just going to answer yeah. yours first yeah. That do you think it's okay for you to bring it up? Absolutely, mm -hmm. because you know before the age of eight years old, everything they learn and know and believe to be true and it's from you. They're watching oh, and feeling yeah. all of your vibration. They know when you're lying. Yeah. They know when you actually support LGBTQ yeah. communities. I mean, I, we were lucky because one of my closest friends from high school is gay, mm -hmm. and you know, for them, it's their gay uncle Peter. Nice. Okay. And good. so they were always exposed, brought, exposed to it and brought up with it and it was you know it was always talked about openly and yeah. uh, so i think i think it's great but that's why it's very important to introduce them to positive mm. role models who are lgbtq i thought we were great because we had sort of experience growing up in our time and and you know gay is out there and i guess way less of an issue was it's so much easier to deal with our kids with that but now there's the whole transgender thing, which is more mainstream, and right. it's it's a whole new set of uh, yeah. issues that we have yeah. to deal with. And right. I don't feel I'm equipped for that. Right, mm. and even 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 that that we have to deal with it, you know. And it's like instead of accepting and tolerating mm -hmm. all these words, inst instead of appreciating them for who they are and, and and admiring them for coming out, you know what I mean? And 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 switch that that feeling that you have, right? Because yeah. yeah. when we condone someone. You know, our ego is really big, and you're not feeling any better about yourself. Mm, sure. You're right. It's just being cocky, and internally, uh, it's not going well. Right. So, if you just appreciate them for who they are, you know, you're just spreading love and goodness. So, yeah. that's the message we should be sending to our good youth. Good point. Good point. You know? Yeah. You want to read them? No, you could. I want to see if you could answer some of these. To no, here, you, you, you open them and read them, and we'll answer okay. them. Okay. I want you to actually see the kids. Oh my God. Like, look at what the kids write today. It's Can a just... man and an animal could have a baby? <laughs> <laughs> could an could a man and an animal man? have a baby? Like this is just some examples. Of is the, that possible? The vastness <laughs> of their questions. Oh, this one's that is not possible. It's just unbelievable. Their questions. Not I yet. Had, Who knows? Huh? I had a student even ask me in South Korea, "Can I get pregnant if I swallow?" You know what I mean? They're very it's innocent. I, it I really know. depends. Yeah. Oh my God! Like look at this kids right. <laughs> You, can you poop while you have sex? Well, this is this is. I know it's just random questions they well, have. I think we should answer some of them. Oh my God! And what's the difference between vaginal orgasms or clitoral orgasms? That's a good question. They're yeah. very good questions that yeah. kids yeah. have. Yeah. So one of the most uh, pressing concerns for adolescents that I've experienced in the, the ten plus years I've been a sex educator is size. 
Okay. Right? A, a lot of students in the, these anonymous questions, they always ask, does size matter? Is it true that black men actually have uh, larger penises than others? So I actually want to uh, never take this out in front of students. I brought it for your own right. your show. But this, if you bring this to a, a, a classroom, the guys are going to be like, <laughs> like this, really uncomfortable. And the girls will be like, oh! They will freak out. They will freak I actually, out. I actually they thought that. I actually thought this is how they, they teach it or they use it. So, yeah, you know. So this is only it's, for... It's a condom, de condom demonstrator. Okay. Thanks, lifestyle. It's amazing. So it's really, it's okay to show uh, condom use, but it's actually better, I think, for teachers, for parents. Don't use a banana or a cucumber because then you compare sure. yourselves. Just use your finger, mm -hmm. you know, and just, you know, explain it and let them feel it, touch it, smell it, all that stuff. And we could do that in, in a bit. But I just want to just go back to size. Does size matter? For women, uh, a lot of the times, a lot of, a lot of studies show it doesn't, right? Uh, especially the length really doesn't matter because you don't want to be hurting the, the woman. So I brought the measuring tapes. I think it's important for kids, right. even for you. It is. <laughs> All right, I just have a competition. <laughs> for kids, boys John, take off your pants. measure themselves and they compare and it's... You have to really explain to your son that everybody's different, every mm -hmm. size is different, mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter because the, the G spot for the woman is about two and a half mm -hmm. uh, uh, inches, inches above in. uh, inside the, the, yeah. the, the vaginal canal. So, uh, just looking at this, you know, it's, it's above the norm if you start from the bottom. I think it was about 15 centimeters. On average, it's anywhere from 10 to 13 centimeters. So it should be a little bit shorter than this when it's erect. Right. And then the circumference wow. as well. Uh, this, women actually say, uh, does matter a little bit more because you could, you could uh, hit the G-spot, etc. cetera. Um, so what do you think the average circumference should be? Uh, it's hard for me to, to judge what a... Yeah. With a, uh, let me with see a constructing <laughs> tape. Yeah, that, but anyway, that, 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 this is a pretty funny just, episode. Just, uh, it's uh, about 11 centimeters around, but it doesn't really matter. As long as average? you're comfortable and find a partner that's comfortable yeah, and, that's right. and fitting to you. So it's important for me to talk to my son Absolutely. about this just to make him... Yeah, that, that every you know, you will find a perfect match one day, a partner that will fit you perfectly and it will feel great and without judgment that's why you have to find a partner that that loves you for who you are and and, and will and will connect wow, with amazing. you and all that goodness you know this is what they need to I do. think that's important too to tell our kids yeah. I think definitely. that absolutely. like it's done definitely not, absolutely and I, I I'm I'm interested because Christina's going to come back because we're going to talk about porn because I think this is a huge it topic is. it is and I have so many questions especially in a high sexual society we're living yeah. that's moving so fast right yeah. uh it's there's more and more of this available, mm -hmm. faster, easier, right. more intense. So uh, guys, uh, Christina, thank you so much for coming on the show. Amazing. We're gonna be talking on the next episode about porn. So you guys wanna make sure to tune in. Mm. Uh, and don't forget to have the balls to, <laughs> Andrew, you're gonna My get balls the balls on the floor again. Absolutely. The balls to talk about it, mm. as well as make sure to subscribe, to hit the bell, as well as guys, we have our podcast available now, so you can listen to all the episodes on the podcast. podcast. Is on Spotify, Spotify, Apple. Yeah, we're gonna put iTunes. the link on the comment of the box. You guys could click it, listen to all the episodes. Yeah.